In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on subclasses and superclasses. Let's go back to our box and rectangle examples and let's see what happens in the client. So let's say we have the following lines of code. So here we have two objects, which we call my rectangle and my box. So my rectangle is an object of the rectangle class and my box is an object of the box class. So my rectangle has two instance variables. So here the length is going to be set to five and the width is going to be set to three. And then my box has three instance variables. So the length is going to be set to six, the width is going to be set to five, and the height is going to be set to four. So now let's suppose we have the following code. So we have system.out.println my rectangle and system.out.println my box. And let's just assume that the two string method is defined for both the rectangle and box classes. So this first line is simply going to print the values of my rectangle. So it should print the five and the three. And then the second line is going to print the values of my box. So it should print the values of, it should print six, five, and four. A question that you might be asking is, can we override superclass variables in a subclass? And the, the idea behind it is we can override superclass methods in a subclass. So if we use our example from before, could we just declare our own length and width variables in our box subclass? And the answer to that is yes, we can do this. And any variable where we're overriding a superclass variable is actually what we call a shadowing variable. Now, with that said, we should avoid doing this. We should avoid shadowing variables. And there's a couple of reasons why. I mean, one of it is that it causes confusion. So if I have a length variable, am I dealing with the subclass version of the length or am I dealing with the superclass version of the length? And it's also considered poor programming practice. Why do we need to create um, additional variables or allocate extra memory when we already have these variables in the superclass? We're just wasting space by creating additional variables in this case. Let's do an example of implementing a superclass in a subclass. So here we'll be dealing with the person and employee class. So in this case, uh, person will be the superclass and employee will be the subclass. So that means we need to start by implementing the person class first. So this is just going to be a small review. We've, we've done the person class in CS121 before, but we're just going to do a, a simple version of it. So let's go ahead and start typing some code. So do the heading for the person class. We need our curly braces. We then need our data. So it's going to be the first name and last name as strings. So first and last. We now need our constructors. So we'll start with our default constructor. And here we'll initialize first and last to the empty string. And then we need our constructor with parameters. So we'll do which should be string. So here we'll just use another method that we'll create in just a second that will set the name and pass the first and last name parameters. So now we'll implement the set name method. So that will actually set the first and last names. Void set name. So here we'll set first to F and last to L. That should be fine in this case. We then need a couple of accessors. So we'll get the first name and the last name. So we'll do string get first. Let's return first and then get last. So this will return the last name. We'll also may want to actually set the first name by itself or set the last name by itself. So we'll create a couple methods for that. So we'll do set first. So we'll do first is F and then we'll do another one for the last name. So last is L. Okay. 
And then we'll finish this up by having the two string method. Okay, so string two string. And here we'll just say we want the first name and concatenate a, a space and then concatenate the last name. So that look, looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save that. So this would be the person class. All right, so that takes care of our super class. So now we need to implement the subclass. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll create a new class. So we'll say public class and we'll call it employee. So now we need to inherit stuff from the person class. So this is where we're going to type extends and then person. So that way, whenever this gets compiled, uh, Java will bring in things, everything from the person class here. So we're going to add some additional information. We're going to add the pay rate and the hours for a particular employee. So it's actually, it should be private. There we go. Double pay rate, private double hours. We now need the constructors for this class. So we'll do public employee. Now remember, in order to initialize the variables from the person class, we can't just call person here. We have to use super. So this is where we're going to type super. So that will call the constructor for our super class. And then we can initialize our pay rates in hours. So we'll initialize them both to zero. So then we have our constructor with parameters. And we'll include parameters for the first and last name of the employee as well. So rates and then double H. So we need to call super again, but now we're going to pass the first and last name for the constructor with parameters. And then we'll initialize our pay rate to R and our hours to H. Okay. Uh, we need to be able to get the pay rate in hours. So we'll do double get pay rate. So we'll just return pay rate public double get hours. So we'll return hours. Uh, we should also be able to set an employee. So we'll include that. If I can type, that'll be good. Void. Set employee string F L double R double H. So here's where we can actually take advantage of the fact that we're inheriting stuff from the person class. So I can just call the set name method in here and pass the first and last name parameters. So there's no issue there. Uh, so then we'll set our pay rate to R and we'll set our hours to H. And we could add some other methods in here if, if you want. We can do like calculating stuff. Um, so actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's add a method for calculating the pay. So let's do public uh, double calculate. Did I spell that right? Yeah. No. No, I did not. There we go. And here we're going to have it return. Uh, the rate times the hours. So we'll do rate times, that should be pay rate, times hours. Okay, and then finally we'll add a two string method here. So we'll do public, sorry, that should be string, string, two string. And then we'll just return, and here's where we can take advantage of our super class. So if I want to do the two string of the person class, I can do super dot two string. And then we will include some stuff. We'll concatenate colon and a dollar sign. And then we'll concatenate the result of calculate pay. And then we'll save this as our employee class. And let's just compile both of these to make sure there aren't any issues. Compile completed. So both of these classes work. So sure enough, this class right here is a subclass that inherits stuff from the person class.